How prednisone side effects change nine or more blood tests. I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist, and I'm here today to explore with you how prednisone changes the numbers that show up on your blood tests. Today, first of all, we'll do a little review of which prednisone nutrients are depleted. Then we will, sorry, going back, we will, I'll go back. I guess we will talk about the lab values and then we will talk about my story and how I ended up in this situation. So the nutrient deficiency. You, if you've been following me for a while, you've seen this slide before. It shows that prednisone depletes sodium and potassium and vitamin A and C, chromium, magnesium, and calcium. And that's just the beginning. We're gonna focus on a few of those first today and show how on my personal lab results, those were depleted or raised. So here are some of my lab results. First of all is sodium. Now some of these images I have posted in the past on Instagram as an Instagram story. If you don't already follow me, please do check me out at prednisone pharmacist. That's the little ampersand prednisone pharmacist. And so that's why some of them kind of cut off at the bottom is because they were Instagram stories. So this first one is sodium. Sodium is also known as salt and it leads to bloating and water retention and all of that can lead to high blood pressure. The normal range of sodium is 137 to 146. So you can see that my lab results stayed within the normal range. And um, that might be true for some of these other labs that you'll see going forward, that it's technically within the range of normal, but it's not my normal. You'll be able to see that before I took prednisone and after I took prednisone, the numbers either drop off or go back up. So on this, the, the sodium, you can see in yellow where I use prednisone and that during that time it shot way up and then while I was on chemo is where that big dip happened. So sodium is retained. We hold on to sodium while we're on prednisone. The next is potassium. And sodium potassium are linked. So whenever sodium goes up, potassium goes down. At least that's what's supposed to happen um, with our kidneys monitoring each of them. And the potassium drops. So because the sodium's going up, prednisone causes your potassium to go down Potassium is really important all over your whole body. And you can see that the normal range is three and a half to five. So you can see my normal is hovering around four before I took prednisone and after I took prednisone, it was up in the fours. But right there, while I was in the highest doses of prednisone, that's when the potassium levels were the lowest. So you need to eat high potassium containing foods. And if you don't know what those are, check out my other videos. Next is calcium. Calcium, as you know, is very important for bones and teeth and for muscle contractions, especially your heart. You can see the normal range of calcium is 8.4 to 10.4. And that my, mine did remain in the normal range here, but not for me, not my normal. My normal was up in the higher nines and it dropped to the lower nines while I was on prednisone. And why does this matter? Well, this matters because calcium is being depleted. This is the number one nutrient to pay attention to. It, the depletion of calcium directly leads to osteoporosis. And since prednisone is the number one drug that causes osteoporosis, this is a big problem. So. The American College of Rheumatologists recommend that everyone taking prednisone be on calcium and vitamin D. So 
I knew that like from a textbook way, but I didn't realize that this was completely true for me personally, that my own blood had dropped. Like I knew it, but I didn't really know it for myself. Like that it showed up in my own medical record that prednisone was depleting calcium. It really astonished me the first time I looked back. Um, just a few, like a month ago, I looked back and I thought, oh my goodness, I do truly have evidence of having low calcium while being on prednisone. My body made up for that lack by pulling it out of my bones because prednisone was making my kidneys pee it out, was blocking my gut from absorbing it, and all of those ways that I've gone through in other videos in the past, especially the one called silent side effect of osteo of prednisone osteoporosis. So it's very important that you take calcium while you're on prednisone. Next, we're talking about blood glucose. This one is probably the next most important one to focus on. Um, those last ones we talked about, those were all nutrients. They were all minerals. And now we're switching to um, other lab results. So this one is often showing up on your lab result as GLUC, G-L-U-C, and that's your blood glucose. Um, Normal values of blood glucose are less than 100, usually between 70 and 100. And I don't have diabetes. I don't have other any other reason why my blood sugar would be high. I wasn't sick. That would be a, a reason that my blood sugar would go up. I just had a a, ble um, a bleeding disorder, but I wasn't. I didn't have an infection, so I shouldn't have high blood glucose for any other reason. The only reason that is possible is I took prednisone. And so you can see that this is completely legitimately a high value. Above 100 is high. And for all of my pregnancies, I passed the um, glucose tolerance test. And so even when I was at my heaviest, my body could handle high um, and the glucose. My insulin was adequate, but only while I was on prednisone were my numbers high. So what does this mean? Having high blood glucose is what leads to weight gain. This is the number one problem that people complain about who are on prednisone. So we really need to do whatever we can to keep our blood glucose steady, especially cutting out refined sugars like table sugar and um, anything basically that comes in a box. Just cut it out of your diet. Next, we're going to talk about the immune system. A lot of people take prednisone because there's something going on with their immune system. They might have an autoimmune condition where their immune system is attacking their own body. That's what happened to me. I took prednisone for a bleeding disorder called ITP. So my body was attacking my own blood cells. And so prednisone causes your blood results to look like this, to have high blood cells. Normal, the normal range of, of white blood cells or WBCs is basically less than 10. And you can see that over and over again, my WBCs were above 10. So this was very high, and normally if you have a result that high, that means you have an infection. That's like doctors test your blood, and if the white blood cell count is high and you have a fever, you have an infection, and it's probably a bacterial infection. And so they'll prescribe antibiotics. But not when you're on prednisone. When you're on prednisone, your immune system is being hijacked. And so this doesn't mean you have an infection. And how come this is happening? Why are the WBCs showing up so high? And that's what is shown in this slide, the neutrophils. So neutrophils are a type of white blood cell and prednisone is causing them to not be as sticky as they usually would be. Neutrophils normally hold on to the endothelium 
and kind of hide and they're not they're not showing up in your blood count because they're stuck to the sides and so they're not floating around whereas prednisone makes it so they don't stick and so they're little tiny immature neutrophils floating around in your blood that don't normally float around and so it makes your white blood cell count look high even though it really isn't so you can see all of those times my neutrophils went super high way above the um, normal range of 6.8 and you can see basically you can follow my prednisone tapers I would go up and then I would go back down and up and go back down and you can see that happening all right next is eosinophils this is another type of immune cell and it is often really high in people who have certain types of allergic disorders like asthma or atopic dermatitis. And so if they take prednisone, it makes their eosinophils drop, which is great, except now they're experiencing lots of side effects. So there are some great drugs that just came out that um, basically target the eosinophils if you have high eosinophils and you have asthma or um, eczema. Finally, we're going to see my story. These are my platelets. The normal range is 150 to 400. Normally, you should be way up there above the 150 line. And at diagnosis, you can see I was way down here at three platelets. Three out of 150. <laughs> Nothing. I was about to bleed to death. I basically had nothing between me and bleeding to death on like bleeding in my brain. If I had gotten in a car accident on my way to the hospital, they wouldn't have been able to stop me from bleeding. I would have just died. So thankfully I made it to the hospital and they told me, you're going to be there a week. And I said, what? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I just have a few spots. And they said, no, you have ITP, immune thrombocytopenia. And I said, whatever. So they started in um, prednisone. And you can see that the platelets crashed each time they tried to take the prednisone away. So I would get on super high doses and they would slowly take them away and I would get down um, my dose on prednisone and then BAM! My platelets would crash and they would drop way below normal over and over and over again. And so we'd think, okay, this time if we just take away the prednisone a little slower, it'll work. And bam, it crashed. And so we over and over, over almost nine months of trying on the prednisone to make it keep my platelets up. And each time it basically got worse at that point. So there's the restarting the high dose each time. So I had to resort to chemotherapy. And this is a chemotherapy made for blood cell cancers and called rituximab, and it made my immune system stop killing my platelets, which was awesome. You can see each time I had the um, chemo was each of those little green dots. And it, I had a one in three chance that it would keep my platelets up for a full year. That's what my doctor told me. And I reached a year. I'm officially beyond that first benchmark. Now, from a year on out, I have a one in three chance that it will be a permanent cure for the rest of my life. So back in April of 2018, I had a one in nine chance that it would be a permanent cure. And now I have a one in three chance since I've made it this far. I'm hoping that it lasts forever and that I never have to go back on prednisone again. So here are my normal platelets. The chemo worked and I had tapered off the prednisone. And while we're on the platelets, um, normal, like people who don't have a platelet disorder can also have high platelets while on prednisone. So it's not unique to me to have high platelets. That can happen to you. You can also get low platelets. And a lot of these things with prednisone, you can have high or you can have low. Like you can have high blood pressure or you can have low blood pressure. You can have high platelets, you can have low platelets. You can have high blood sugar, 
all of those things. So this is what um, made me better. Following my lab results gave me answers to all of these questions I had. I wanted to know why I felt hungry all the time. Well, it's because I had this high blood sugar and insulin resistance. Why I felt bloated. It was that high sodium. So if you haven't been getting your blood checked, I suggest you at least get some checked um, once a year at the very least while you're on prednisone just to make sure that there's nothing too out of whack. And um, this episode, as in all future episodes, are brought to you by Neutronize. And I came up with Neutronize right at that lowest peak. Neutronize is, um, I created a supplement called Zone. And when I was at that lowest moment, when I was on chemo, I was feeling awful. Side effects from both drugs. And I had this epiphany. People need answers. People with on prednisone are feeling awful and they need help designed specifically for them. So I created a dietary supplement to give back these nutrients that my body was depleted from. When I was researching to make this dietary supplement called Zone, I knew in all of these textbooks that it was actually, prednisone was causing all these nutrient depletions, but I didn't realize that it was true for me until I looked back and did all of these studies of my own medical record. And so Neutronize can be found at Neutronize.com and go there to get a supplement designed specifically for you. Have a lovely day and follow me on Instagram.